Hey everyone, it's Guilherme, and in this video we are going to learn the advantages and drawbacks of using a rigid body 2D for controlling a player character. And with this, you'll be able to better determine when to use or not to use each type of physics body for your characters. For instance, if you should use a rigid body or a kinematic body, depending on the type of situation that you have at your hand. Here we can see the demo that we created for this project. I'm currently controlling a rigid body character. And you can see how it responds and also interacts with other physics objects like that box that I just pushed. And if I press R, I'll be able to switch to the kinematic body character. And as you can see, it is a little bit more responsive than our rigid body one. But it has a drawback, which is that you won't be able to easily interact with physics objects. For instance, if I try to push this box, it's going to start to come out of the wall, which is something that wouldn't happen if we were using the rigid body character. Also, if we jump on top of it, it's going to work correctly, which is not the case with our kinematic body character. We are now in Godot and we are going to see how we created the rigid body character. Our main scene here only contains our map and our push box, and our players are instantiated by our game script, so that's why we don't see it here. So let's open the rigid player scene. The scene structure of both scenes are pretty much the same. We have a physics body, in this case our rigid body, and we also have our collision shape. The only difference between the two is that inside of our rigid player, we also have this timer that we use to determine if we have just left the ground, because we need that information to correctly switch our player's current state. Before jumping into the code, we first have to take a look on our inspector. Here, there are a few things that you have to keep in mind when you are creating this type of character. The first one is that you probably want your mode to be in character. This is going to make your character not rotate. If that was not the case, we would be rotating all over the place when we hit walls or when we were trying to move on top of the ground. The second thing is that our gravity scale has to be increased a lot or you can also change it in your project settings. I just decided to do it here because it was easier to control and fine tune it. If not, your character is not going to feel as responsive as it should be and your game view is not going to be so good. We also have a physics material applied to our rigid body. Again, these values you can keep fine tuning them until you find something that works for your game and that you think that feels good. But in my case, this is what gave me better results. Now, when we try to make our player jump, we have to know if it is currently on top of the ground. And as we are dealing with a rigid body, we do not have the is on floor method that we have on our kinematic body. And because of that, we have to find our own ways to determine if our player is or not on the ground. I tried using ray casts before, but that didn't work correctly. And you also end up losing some precision because if you're only going to use one ray cast, it's probably going to be right in the middle of your character. And sometimes you are going to be on the ground, for instance, if you are on top of a ledge, but the ray cast is not going to know that. And because of that, we're not going to be able to jump in a situation where we actually should be able to jump. So what we are using to determine if our player is or not on the ground is the contact monitor. And to use it, we have to first enable it on our inspector and also define how many contacts we want to be reported for us. In this case, we only need one and we're going to use this information to then make our player jump or not. All right, now that we know that, let's jump into the code. Now, our focus inside of this script is to see how we are controlling our player and detecting if he is on the ground or not. And that's what we're going to focus even though we have some code here that is also responsible for our state machine. So you can see that we have our transitions here, for instance, but we're not going to dive into that. Instead, we're just going to focus on the part of the movement. Now let's go a little bit to the bottom. And here you can see that we are using a function called integrate forces instead of using the physics process. And this is because we are going to modify the state of our character directly instead of using forces, for instance. We're going to be changing its linear velocity and that's something that you have to do inside of the integrate forces function or else you're probably going to get some weird behaviors and that's also something that is not recommended. Here you can see how we are checking if our player is on the ground. As I said before, we are using our contact monitor to determine if we are on the ground and we begin by checking if our contact count is greater than zero. This means that we are touching something and if we are, we're going to see if the position of this collision point is below us and if that's the case then we are on the ground also as i said before make sure that you have the content monitor turned on or else this is not going to work and your game is going to lag a lot to determine in which direction our player wants to move we have the get move direction function which is going to return to us a motion vector 2 that is going to tell us in which direction this player wants to move now here we have 
the part of the state machine of our character again we're not going to go into detail here if you're not familiar with state machine you can reference to other video inside of the channel that explain them now in the case that our player is currently idling this means that he's not doing anything we are going to check if we want to move to a certain direction and if that's the case we are going to change our state to the run and if that's not the case then we are going to check for jumps and to do so we are using the is on ground variable that we created before and when we want to jump we are going to use the apply central impulse function add a force and we're going to change our state to the air state now inside of the run state we first check if we have to go back to our idle state if not we are going to check if we don't have any contacts occurring this means that we probably fall from a platform or something like that and we are going to then change back to the air state and we once again are going to check if we are going to jump and finally what we do is here using our state we're going to directly control our linear velocity because we are currently trying to move either to the left or to the right and we're going to set it as a velocity by multiplying the direction by our move speed now this is a point that i think is a big drawback of using this approach to control your rigid body this is because as you can see we do not have access to the delta variable inside of this function this means that we might get some differences in player speed depending on the frame rate that this game is going to be running so this is something that you really have to keep in mind if you decide to go with this approach finally we have our air state and here if we decide to move we are once again going to access our linear velocity but this time instead of using our movement speed we're going to use our air speed because we don't want to give the player full control of his movement when he's in the air that's because we want to simulate inertia and whatnot and here we see the just air timer that i talked before being used whenever we enter the air state we are going to initialize this timer because whenever we jump in the next frame we are still going to be in the ground but in reality we are actually jumping but the game is still detects that we are on the ground and because of that we use this timer to check if we just jumped in this case this timer is going to be running so that's the reason why we check if it is stopped here because if that's the case then we actually jumped and we are not checking this second frame that is incorrectly telling us that we are on the ground and we should change our state back to idle because we are on the ground correctly and not just trying to get out of the ground now we're not going to go into detail on how our state machine works here because this is not the focus of this tutorial but if we go to our change state function you can see that whenever we enter a different state we are going to call the enter state function and when that function is called we are going to check which state we are currently entering and in the case that we go to the idle state we're going to set our linear velocity x to zero because we don't want our player to be moving around with inertia you could remove this line if you wanted that effect this is not the case here and in this case you can see that we are directly accessing our linear velocity we're not doing that through our state and this is safe to do because we're only doing it a few times we're not doing it on every frame so it's not something that's going to give us weird behavior and when we enter the air state we are going to start our just air timer finally we have our get move direction and as you can see this function is just going to return to us a motion vector that is going to tell us to which direction our player wants to move now just as a comparison i'm going to open the scene of our kinematic player as you can see the scene structure is pretty much the same that we had on our rigid player but we don't have our timer that we use to determine if we are just being aired and as for the code we don't have to use the integrate forces instead what we are doing is using our physics process and here is where we are going to do all the checks to see if we want to move to a certain direction and whatnot and to actually move our player we are going to use the move and slide and when we want to jump we are checking in the nhandle input function if we are on the floor and again this is a helper method that we get from the kinematic body this way we don't have to use the contact monitor as we were using with our rigid player and not only that but we also have access to other helper functions for instance the is on wall or is on ceiling and overall the code structure is shorter than the one that we saw on our rigid player what we lose here is the ability to interact with physics objects and depending on the type of game that you are creating if you relies a lot on physics this might not be the best approach for it also if you want to go more in depth of what i just talked here you can also read my report on the rigid body control that we created on the last week for our metroidvania there i go a little bit more into detail and there is also a little log of how i try to implement things you can also get some more information out of that as well and in this tutorial we saw an approach on how to implement a rigid body character and we could also see the same type of character being implemented using the kinematic body 
This way, we'd had something to compare it to. And the important things that we have to keep in mind here is to use the contact monitor on our rigid body and also to make sure that we are using the state variable instead of our integrate versus function when we want to directly modify the state of our physics body. If you want to dive deeper into this subject, there are going to be some links in the description of the video that you can follow to learn more on the subject. As always, this project is available on GitHub, so you can play around with it if you want to. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.